Quiet, please. At this time, I ask that you please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, it's all yours. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of September 12th, 2018. Quiet in the chambers. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Here. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Present. Drum. Present. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander, Here. Levin, Here. Levine, Here. Mizell, Here. Menchaca, Presente, Miller, Present. Moya, Perkins, Here. Powers, Here. Reynoso, Here. Richards, Present, Rivera, Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Ulrich. Ballone. Van Bramer. Williams. Here. Jaeger. Matteo, Combo, present. Speaker Johnson, Rivera, Borelli, Matteo. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Avraham Hecht, spiritual leader of the Hatikva Russian Jewish Center, located at 8109 Lefferts Boulevard in Kew Gardens. Please rise. All rise. Before I begin my remarks, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to Speaker Corey Johnson and the entire New York City Council for enabling the JCC of Canarsie and Project Lead to uplift thousands of precious individuals on a regular basis. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, look upon all of us assembled today with your love and admiration. We are here to pay tribute to those who toil in the vineyards of public service. We pray 
that the Almighty showers his goodness upon our New York City Council members who seek to govern justly, honestly, and lovingly, providing direction and leadership to all New Yorkers and people from all walks of life. We pray for their ability to work together in true harmony. Bestow upon them wisdom and fortitude to govern our people with kindness, understanding, and clarity. Enable them to continue to serve as beacons of light so that they can protect and uplift the neediest among us, including the frail elderly, the poor, the hungry, and the immigrants. Help all of us to show the downtrodden that they are not alone. Enable all of us to inspire others so that they feel they are not forgotten. We must remember to work together for the good of all New Yorkers, extending acts of hope and harmony. May we always be guided by a spirit of justice, kindness, and mutual respect. May all of us be blessed with personal peace and fulfillment. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Heck, and we are so pleased to have you here during this particular time. Uh, the Jewish Caucus is particularly proud to have you here, chaired by Councilmember Chaim Deutsch, and we are now going to have the invocation will be spread by Councilmember Karen Kosowitz. Thank you. I move to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you so much, Councilmember Kosowitz. And now we are going to have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Mark Joni. Thank you, Majority Leader. I motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of July 18, 2018 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much, Council Member Joni. We are now going to have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M93 through M99, various applications. Uh, that's coupled on uh, a call-up vote, and at this time I would ask for a roll call on all of today's land use call-ups. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? We're voting on uh, land use call ups. Oh, yes, I am. Thank you. Barron. Yes. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinides. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Madam Chair Lady, with permission, I would like to vote on all land and use call-ups and couple items on the general order calendar and all resolution. I vote yes on all, with the exception of introduction 954A and resolution 113, which I vote no. Permission granted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, Reverend Diaz. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordinchik. Holden. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, I'm proud that we're voting on over at this time, we're just uh, voting on land use call-ups. Yes. I'm proud that we are voting on about 1,000 third-party transfer units on the uh, land use agenda. Uh, in those units, the city had originally planned affordability rates at 150% of AMI. Uh, that translates to $109,000 a year, uh, 600, uh, and, and so 
those units were going to be affordable to people making $109,000 a year. And I'm not sure why the city would be building affordable housing for folks who are making six figures or what's wrong with our city that we need affordable housing for folks making six figures. But the uh, good news is, as a result of our questioning and our work in planning dispositions and concessions, our committee members as well as our land use chair, we're able to negotiate that down and moving forward the city will only be doing 120 percent of AMI, which translates to $87,000 a year. It's still higher affordability than expected, but uh, it's a step in the right direction. We hope to bring it further and build more affordable housing to more New Yorkers, and I proudly vote aye. Thank you for your vote. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lantzman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Manchaka. Aye on all. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye, and with permission, I would like to vote aye in all general order. I would like to ask permission to vote in all general order. I will confirm that shortly. Okay. Moya. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye and all. Torres. Aye and all. Traeger. Ulrich. Aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. And now we will have communication from the speaker and if anyone needs to vote early um, in advance, please see Jason Goldman. Yeah, please see Jason Goldman. Good afternoon. First and foremost, shh. First and foremost, today we commemorate the anniversary that we can never and will never forget. Yesterday, we gathered to mourn and celebrate the lives lost on September 11th, 2001. 17 years later, that tragic day still breaks our hearts for those New Yorkers and their families, those spouses, children, and parents who said goodbye to their loved ones for the last time. Every single one of us remembers where we were when the World Trade Center was under attack. We now remember every single first responder an office employee, and anyone who we lost that fateful day. Yesterday, I had the privilege of being at the reading of the names and ceremony at the World Trade Center site. And yesterday evening, I had the privilege of being on Staten Island in Councilmember Rose's district at Postcards. And both of them were incredibly moving and unbelievably heartbreaking for the families who still have not healed from what happened 17 years later. Also, I'd like to remember a number of courageous New Yorkers we lost recently. 
Last month, Carlos Gabrielli slipped at a construction site in Staten Island while using a chainsaw and cut his own hands and throat. His coworkers did what they could to stop the bleeding, but he died of his injuries at the hospital. Carlos was 50 years old. Jose Alvarado, 37-year-old pizza delivery man, was shot and killed while returning to Papa John's from a delivery. Alvarado was known as an upstanding man in his Harlem neighborhood. The police reported that there was nothing stolen from Alvarado and the killing did not appear to be part of a robbery. More senseless gun violence in our city. If people could please rise so we could have a moment of silence of those lost on 9-11 and Mr. Alvarado and Mr. Gabrielli. Thank you very much. Finally, I want to wish a happy new year <clears throat> to all Jewish New Yorkers. I hope you had a blessed Rosh Hashanah filled with joy, meaning, good health, prosperity, and contentment. Lesh not Tavan, I hope your stomachs were full like mine were from being at Councilmember Kozlowitz's home on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, last but not least, we have uh, some congratulations in order as well. Uh, just in case anyone didn't know already, one of my uh, senior advisors, Ebony Meeks Laidley, and her husband, Jason, are expecting their first child. Ebony is expected to have this beautiful baby next month. Uh, we are so happy and excited for Ebony and for Jason, their entire family, and of course, Grandpa Congressman Greg. The Women's Caucus threw a wonderful baby shower this morning for Ebony downstairs, and the celebration continues here in the chambers. Congratulations to Ebony. We look forward to meeting this new beautiful member of the City Council family. <laughs> Jumping into our docket for the day, the Council will vote on a few Article 11 property tax exemptions. 501 West 143rd Street in Manhattan is in Councilmember Levine's district. Morningside Heights Apartments in Manhattan, again, is in Councilmember Levine's district. And Argyle Road in Brooklyn uh, is in Councilmember Eugene's district. I want to thank the staff who worked on these, Count, uh, Rebecca Chasen. Next, the Council is going to vote on the following land use items. These are applications for rezonings. 1601 DeKalb in Brooklyn, it's in Councilmember Raphael Espinal's district. 5563 Summit Street in Brooklyn in Councilmember Brad Lander's district. 5 Bement Avenue on Staten Island in Councilmember Debbie Rose's district. Uh, we're voting on some landmark designations in Councilmember Richards's district in Far Rockaway. Two landmarks were first identified through the downtown Far Rezoning, Far Rockaway Rezoning, which Councilmember Richards uh, shepherded through the council, and that was, that was approved in September of 2017. These two landmarks today recognize the importance of the historic FDNY firehouse and the NYPD police precincts in downtown Far Rockaway. Uh, we are voting to approve a site selection in my district for the New York City Police Department Bomb Squad to be located on West 26th Street between 7th and 8th Avenues. It will house the headquarters of the New York City Police Department's Bomb Squad in a new facility that will improve their needs and enhance operations and productivity. The Council will be voting to approve six applications for tax exemptions related to properties subject uh, to final judgments of in-rem foreclosures in Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. These are third-party transfer tax exemptions, and this is under Article 11 tax exemptions and UDAP approval. Uh, and uh, some of these are the Triple HDFC in Councilmember Diana Ayala's district, Nueva Era in Councilmember Dennis Rodriguez's district, and Deschler Apartments in Councilmember Perkins's district. 
Moving on, the Council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. First, a package of bills concerning the L train shutdown. Just about every New Yorker is aware by now that the L train will be shutting down in April of 2019 for no less than 15 months. Understandably, New Yorkers on both sides of the East River are getting more and more anxious about what, are call, what some are calling the apocalypse. I understand their concerns and I share them. I ride the subway all the time and I frequently ride the L train. It runs through my district, it runs across town, and even people who don't live along it use it regularly. It's a closure that's going to have a huge impact for our city and a huge loss for the entire system. I think we'd agree there are no perfect solutions here. There will be a significant disruption to strap hangers and to local residents. Uh, and that is my primary concern, mitigating the pain for these subway and bus riders, pedestrians, cyclists, and neighborhood residents. I'm also deeply concerned about how traffic is going to impact the quality of life for everyone affected. And it's why I'm proud to co-sponsor two bills in this package with our Transportation Committee Chair, Idanis Rodriguez. Introduction 989A would require the Department of Transportation, in coordination with the MTA, to designate at least one community information center in each of the boroughs in Manhattan and Brooklyn during the 2019 Canarsie Tunnel reconstruction. Introduction 990 would require the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation to designate an ombudsperson to receive and investigate complaints and comments in connection with the Canarsie Tunnel closure starting in 2019. And Resolution 377, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Espinal, would call upon the Governor and the MTA to commit to an expeditious transition to electric bus fleet and to use electric buses as a robust part of the replacement services during the L train shutdown. I want to thank all the staff who worked on this, uh, James DiGiovanni, Malik Nasruddin, Jonathan Maserano, Rick Arbello, Emily Rooney, and Tirza Nasser. Next, we'll vote on a bill of mine, introduction 954A, which would allow individuals to self-attest when changing the sex designation and gender marker on their birth record to conform to their gender identity. The bill will also allow individuals who don't identify as exclusively male or female to change the sex designation on their birth certificate to X. This groundbreaking legislation will make New York City birth certificates more inclusive for all and will send a powerful signal to the world that our government works for everyone. Now more than ever, it's important for us as public servants to show our constituents we see them, we have their backs, and we respect them for who they are. That continues today with our vote on this bill. I want to thank the Health Committee staff who worked on this, Jeanette Merrill, Emily Balkin, and Z. Emanuel Halu. Next, introduction 447A, co-sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, would require the Department of Corrections to post quarterly and yearly reports on departmental, facility, and housing area lockdowns. Such reports would include information on the average duration of lockdowns, the average number of individuals affected by such lockdowns, mandated services either canceled or delayed due to a lockdown, and reasons for such lockdowns. I want to thank the staff, again, who worked on this bill. Daniel Aids, Josh Kingsley, Alana Sivan, uh, Robert Calandra, and Brian Crow. We will also vote on a resolution today, sponsored by Councilmember Carlos Menchaca and Helen Rosenthal, led by the, the prime sponsors Helen Rosenthal and Carlos Menchaca, calling upon the U.S. Congress to pass and the President to sign the Establishing a Humane Immigration Enforcement System, which would abolish uh, U.S. Uh, immigration and Customs Enforcement and reassign some of the functions to other federal agencies. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Rob Newman, Richard Cordero, and Cassie Addison. Finally, the Council will vote on a comprehensive school siting legislation package, which would aim to eliminate overcrowding at the city schools as we continue to kick off the new school year and encourage New York City students to thrive in the classroom. We must continue to be committed to providing stellar resources and increasing the quality of our schools and other educational facilities. For too long, we've allowed our children to learn in schools that are overcrowded. Students who are educated in overcrowded environments are at a disadvantage in an increasingly competitive world. The greatest city in the world deserves educational facilities to match that. While our city has made significant new investments in our children's education, there is still much more that we can do. 
Earlier this year, the Council released a report entitled Planning to Learn, the School Building Challenge to examine challenges faced when planning for and citing new schools, which can lead to overcrowding. The report and its recommendations were a result of a year-long year review of the process by an internal council working group, and today we're taking action. This started under Speaker Mark Viverito and Chair Julissa Ferreres Copeland, and we are proud of the work that they did in getting us to today. Uh, and some of the bills we're voting on today related to this are Introduction 449A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, which would require the Department of Education to post online maps showing the geographic boundaries, known as sub-districts, used by the Department of Education and the School Construction Authority to identify where new capital funding will be targeted for building new schools. Introduction 461A, also sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, would require the Department of Citywide Administrative Services to provide written notice to the Department of Education and the School Construction Authority within 30 days after city-owned or leased property of at least 20,000 square feet is determined to have no current use. Introduction 729A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, would require the Department of Education to post <clears throat> online the process, data, and criteria used by the department and the school construction authority to calculate the number of seats needed to be built to meet future enrollment needs. An introduction 757A, sponsored by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, would require the mayor to create an interagency task force on school siting to identify potential city-owned properties for school siting and identify vacant lots that may be good candidates for school siting. Resolution 286, Sponsored by Councilmember Richie Torres, calls upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would give New York City and any public authorities or public benefit corporations, including the School Construction Authority, broad authority to utilize design build delivery methods for capital projects. And lastly, Resolution 289, sponsored by Councilmember Paul Vallone, would call on the School Construction Authority to more clearly communicate to the general public how city residents can submit potential school sites and the guidelines used by the School Construction Authority in considering whether a suggested school site meets the evaluation standards used by the authority. That is a lot that we are doing on DOE and on the SCA. It has been a long process. It is not the sexiest stuff. It is not headline grabbing, but it is incredibly important as each one of us seek to get the necessary seats and schools in our districts and identify new potential sites in neighborhoods across the city that need new schools. So I am incredibly proud of all the council members who worked on this in the past and uh, coming to today. And I want to thank the staff. The staff did an incredible job on this report. I want to thank Beth Gollum, Smita Deshmukh, uh, Andrea Vasquez, uh, Caitlin O'Hagan, Elizabeth Hoffman, and Rebecca Chasen, as well as other members of the working group from the staff, Jan Atwell, John Douglas, Jeff Yoon, Raju Mann, and Regina Pareda Ryan. That concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Cory Johnson, for all of the work that you have done, as well as the city council members and all of their prospective staffs. We will now move into the discussion of general orders. Um, before we begin, I'd like to ask members to please limit your discussion only to items being voted on in today's general order calendar. Thank you, and do I see anyone prepared to discuss uh, seeing none? We will now move on to report of special committees. None. We'll have reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, Intro 447A, Emergency Lock-Ins. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, Intro 449A, Subdistrict Maps. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intros 461A, 729A, and 757A, School Siting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Reso Resolution 286, Design, Build, Delivery. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 196 and Reso 516 through preconsidered LU 198 and Reso 518, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 954A, Birth Records. 
Uh, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 152 and Reso 519, and LU 153 and Reso 520, landmark designations. Coupled on general orders. LU 176 and Reso 521, NYPD Bomb Squad Headquarters. Coupled on general orders. LU 177 and Reso 522, through LU 187 and Reso 530 on page 7, various property tax exemptions. Couple of general orders. LU 188 and Reso 531 and LU 189 and Reso 532 zoning map amendments. Couple of general orders. LU 190 and Reso 533, 205 Park Avenue rezoning. Approved and laid over. LU 191, 205 Park Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Excuse me, LU 195 and Reso 534, 5 Beeman Avenue rezoning. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 989A, Community Information Centers. Couple of general orders. Intro I'm, 9. Sorry, amended and coupled in general orders. Intro 990A, DOT Ombudsman. Amended and coupled to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled to general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. LU 164 and Reso 535 and LU 165 and Reso 536, 1601 DeKalb Avenue rezoning. Coupled to general orders and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Rodriguez. Perkins. Aye. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Abura. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Aye, with the exception of land use 188 and the accompanying resolution and 190, if we're voting on that today. We're not. Okay, 188. Thank you. Borelli. I and all accept intro 954A. Brennan. I and all. Cabrera. Chin. I and all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegy. Aye. Deutsch. I and all accept 4954A. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. With my warmest gratitude and appreciation to our finance chair and education chair and the speaker for their collaborative effort in passing today's comprehensive package of bills related to school siting, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jonai. Aye. aye. Grodenchik. Holden. I and all except 954A. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye and all. Lanceman. Aye. Mr. Clerk, I just want to remind members we're voting on three resolutions after the general order calendar, so folks must stick around to vote on those three resolutions. Thank you. I apologize. Lander. Levin. Levine. I own all. Mizell. Menchaca. Permission to speak. Permission granted. Thank you. I want to I rise to speak on the incredible package of SEA bills. Uh, these bills represent the will of so many of the people that we represent, the mothers and the students who are seeking uh, in, in middle of crisis for a better education system, literally building a better education system. Uh, these bills represent good, good research, but I want to lift the stories of Sunset Park. Uh, more than 25% of the seats that are getting built today uh, as, as, as we speak um, are getting built in my district, in District 38. This includes District 15 and 20, uh, where we are seeing, seeing incredible crisis in overcrowding. The success was connected to people organizing on the ground and literally walking block by block looking for sites. And the stories that the council members here today are, that are saying yes to these packages understand that. 
when we bring more transparency to this process of building better schools and bring the neighborhood and community members who understand their neighborhood, uh, they might ha not have the data, these bills will bring the data that they hear and understand and feel every single day when they drop off their kids, when they participate in the PTAs, and when they're part of their child's life. That is what is in the spirit of these, of these bills, and so I'm so proud to be here uh, with all of you saying yes, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. I vote aye. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. Aye and all. Thanks. Reynoso. Aye and all. Richards. Aye and all. Rivera. Aye and all. Rose. Aye and all. Rosenthal. Salamanca. I and all. Torres. I and all. Ulrich. I and all. Valone. A brief moment to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to the speaker and all the council members on these bills. Uh, I can't think of a more contentious topic at our community boards when they are not included in the site selection process. Uh, in residential communities like ours, that's the final straw, and they've always felt left out and completely devoid of a process that involves the future of their children. So by us today doing this and having a site selection process that we can be involved with, the community can be involved with, is a huge step in the right direction. So thank you, Corey Johnson, and to everyone that worked on these bills. Thank you. I probably have an eye on all. Thank you. Williams. Aye and all. Jaeger. Aye on all with the exception of intro 954A. Matteo. No on 954A, aye and the rest. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. That was a record-breaking roll call vote. <laughs> You're welcome, Majority Leader. Uh. <laughs> okay, all items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 47 the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 954A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, six negative, and zero abstentions. And LU 188 plus uh, Resolution 531, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call-ups vote is 47 affirmative and zero negative. We will now have an introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish today to speak on the resolutions at hand? We have uh, Council Member Vallone. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I'll pass since I had my comments in general time. Thank you. We now have Council Member Rafael Espinal. I'll pass as well, just to keep the things going. Whoa. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> we will now bring it to Council Member Rosenthal. Well, we should, you know, abolish ICE. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to make this really fast. Um, I'm very pleased that the council will be voting today on my resolution, which calls on Congress to pass legislation that would abolish ICE and establish a more humane immigration enforcement system. Hashtag abolish ICE at its core 
uh, resonates because it represents a willingness to reshape our institutions to rectify injustice and move toward a more humane place. In its 16 years, ICE has racked up an appalling and infamous record of abuses while failing to make our country safer. The pending federal legislation, H.R. 6361, would create a task force to review the truly essential functions currently under the jurisdiction of ICE and transfer them to other federal agencies while eliminating those that fail to serve a public safety or national security purpose. This conversation to abolish ICE is similar in many ways to the discussion of closing Rikers here in New York City. Yes, there are practical and political challenges. Yes, transforming institutions in com is complicated work, but it must get done. I want to thank Council Members Carlos Menchaca, Chair of the Immigration Committee, and Speaker Johnson for their support in uh, moving this resolution forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal. We now have Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you. And I also want to thank Councilmembers Rosenthal, Rivera, Speaker Johnson for uh, joining me in an op-ed on this topic to abolish ICE. The Trump administration's zero tolerance family separation policy has drawn much needed attention to the abuses per per perpetuated by ICE. But this crisis didn't start here. And the debate around what to do with ICE is not as complicated as you believe when you hear some people talk about this topic, it boils down to one very basic truth, that ICE was created to improve public safety and homeland security and to create connections between agencies. I believe and we believe today with this resolution to support Congress to abolish ICE that it has failed. Instead of targeting and prioritizing human trafficking or terrorism, ICE is going after our dreamers late day laborers, our loving parents, and we spend almost 18 billion on immigration enforcement. That's more than the budget of all the other law enforcement agencies combined, like the FBI, the DEA, the ATF, the Secret Service. And we recently learned this week that Trump moved money out of FEMA as we hear about this hurricane burling through to hit the East Coast and moved it over to ICE. This is an abomination and is cruel and we need to end it. Uh, no further time, I urge you all to support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, and now we will, uh, let me read today's resolutions into the record. I would like to remind all members who want to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions to register their vote with the clerks at the dais. Resolution 289, calling on the New York City School Construction Authority to more clearly communicate to the general public how city residents can submit potential school sites and the guidelines used by the School Construction Authority in considering whether a suggested school site meets the evaluation standards used by the authority. All in favor, say aye. All, oppo all opposed, abstentions. The ayes have it. Resolution 377, resolution calling upon the governor and the Metropolitan Transportation Authority to commit to an expeditious transition to an electric bus fleet and to use electric buses as a robust part of its replacement service during the upcoming L train shutdown. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Preconsidered resolution calling upon the U.S. Congress to pass and the President to sign the Establishing a Humane Immigration Enforcement System Act, H.R. 6361, legislation that would abolish the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. All opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Give us one moment. I'd like to call on Council Member Levine to vote Levin. I'd like to call on Council Member Levin to vote on the general order calendar. Just to make sure I vote aye on all on all general orders. Thank you. Thank you. 
We will now move into general discussion. If members have signed up for general discussion, we will now begin that portion of the meeting. We will begin with Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I want to call our attention to the passing of world-renowned pianist, composer, and creative musician, Randy Weston, who died at the age of 92. Hold on. If folks quiet in the chambers. If, quiet in the chambers. If folks could please be quiet for Councilmember Barron and anyone else who has general remarks. Go ahead. Thank you. Randy Weston was trained as a classical pianist, but he decided on the music genre that we call jazz, but which he called African rhythms. His major influence was Thelonious Monk, but Randy Weston was constantly reshaping his cadences and lingering without a steady pace. The New York Times said, quote, everything he played was edited in the essential, no essential notes of a phrase, and each phrase stood on its own, carefully separated from the next. His concerts and seminars emphasis the African roots of jazz. Quote, wherever I go, I try to explain that if you love music, you have to know where it came from. Whether you say jazz or blues or bossa nova or samba or salsa, all these are names of African contributions to the Western Hemisphere. If you take out the African element of our music, you would have nothing. Randy Weston says in his memoirs that he recalled his father, a supporter of Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association, that his father hung maps and portraits of African kings on the walls and was forever talking about African and Caribbean culture. He wrote of his father, quote, he was planting the seeds that I would become, of, for what I would become as far as developing my consciousness on the plight of Africans all over the world. His mother embedded in him a love of African American church music. He traveled around the world and he visited many countries. He played on many lofty venues and gave his performances. But he also had a very common touch. He came to the House of the Lord Church where we had a small elementary school, less than 50 children, and he did a benefit concert for us. And he taught the children, he didn't just play, he taught the audience between the pieces that he rendered as to what the origins of the music are. So he'll be forever missed, a great man, six foot seven, but great in his musical talents. And his last album was recorded just two years ago at the age of 90. And he said it featured an orchestra-sized iteration of African rhythms through music and spoken word that traces origins of man back to the Nile River. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you Madam so much, Majority Council. Speaker, Majority Leader. <laughs> Thank you so much, Council Member Barron. And the great legend, Baba Randy Weston, was also a member of my district. And there was a very powerful and regal homegoing service at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. And Randy Weston will certainly be an icon that will be missed, but his music and talent will live on forever. I would now like to call on Council Member Levin. We're now going to call on Councilmember Rose. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I'm excited to uh, seek the support for two bills. I'm co-sponsoring with Councilmembers Traeger and Kalos, which will direct DYCD in consultation with DOE, one, to report on and establish the implementation of a program of universal after school for all public school students. That's intro 1100. And report on our current after school programs and the funding allocated to these programs. And that's 1113. My colleagues, we all know too well that we have a dearth of opportunities for our youth after school in many of our communities with difficulties and sometimes deadly consequences. It is imperative that we get a better understanding of the patchwork of after school programming that we have created in New York City and move towards creating universal after school so that all of our students in New York City public schools have the opportunity to continue to learn, be productive, be safe, and thrive as they prepare to enter the world of work. 
and I look forward to holding hearings on this important legislation as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rose. And now I'd like to call on Council Member Rivera to clarify her vote. I vote aye on all uh, with the exception of 186 and 187. I'll have to abstain. My husband's a director of operations at Canberra Properties. Thank you for the clarification. And now we are going to um, reflect our revisions that have been uh, recently presented to us. In the matters of land use 186 plus 187 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. We will now call on the speaker to close today's meeting, and I want to say, Council Member Kosowitz, I too like good food, and so now we will present. <laughs> <laughs> and now we will turn it over to Council Member Speaker Majority Lee, excuse me, Speaker Corey Johnson. We did that designation bill today on gender, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. So um, thank you for, uh, of course, presiding over today's hearing. And thank I want to thank all the council members for their hard work on all of these bills. And uh, with that, today's stated meeting of September 12, 2018 is hereby adjourned. And vote tomorrow. Please make sure that everyone votes tomorrow. This is an important election year, and we must make sure that our vote counts. Thank you. This meeting is now adjourned.